Hello, I'm Kurt Owen. Today on Fight to Win, we complete our two weeks on spirit, soul, and body. We're gonna talk about something today that is gonna shock you, but you it will change your life forever. We're also, this is our last day to provide for you to get the Spirit, Soul, and Body teaching absolutely free. And then we're gonna talk about the importance of medical training in your tactical life. To succeed in life, we have to fight. That's why winners train spirit, soul, and body. We have to be ready. Not your typical minister, Kurt Owen left a successful career in private investigation and executive protection for the ministry over 20 years ago. His simple, practical application of God's Word will reveal how much Jesus loves you and give you the ability to fight to win. Now, get ready for a tactical tip from Pastor Kurt. Hello, I'm Kurt Owen. I want to talk to you today about medical training. You know, it, whether you're a church safety team or whether you're just an everyday carry person, you need to catch up on your medical stuff. You need to learn how to use tourniquets. You need to learn how to do CPR, both adult and infant. You need to learn how to use AEDs because odds are you're never going to face like an assassin. You're never going to face maybe an active killer, but you're going to run across somebody who needs medical help. And, you know, if we look at the scriptures and it talks about the Samaritan and it talks about the man who was stopped and helped him, or not the Samaritan, stopped and helped the Jew, wouldn't you want to be that person? Wouldn't you want to be the person that could render aid? Get you some medical training so that you can be a benefit to those around you. Hello, I'm Kurt Owen. Welcome back to Fight to Win. Today we're in the last day of two weeks we've been talking about spirit, soul, and body and I've said a lot of things. Now I'm going to try to put it all together today plus really giving you something fundamentally that I believe will help and change your life. Now this is our last uh, time to be offering this product. After this you can actually buy it on the website but why would you do that when we'll give it to you for free? It's about $84. Uh, by the way, if it's on the website and you don't have the money to purchase it, uh, you can actually co just contact the ministry and say, listen, I really need this. Uh, could you, would you mind sending it to me? And we'll be glad to do that. Our partners uh, are what, who make that possible. And so, and by the way, I'm going to give you an opportunity to partner with us today. But anyway, this is Spirit, Soul, and Body. It's worth about 84 bucks, um, close to 100, I, I think. I, honestly, I don't remember how many messages are on here. And people say, well, you've been saying that for two weeks. You don't remember. It's two weeks to you. It's about 12 hours to me. So <laughs> I haven't found out. But uh, th we know that I know this will bless you. There's so much I haven't been able to say. I have more examples. I have more things on here that I wish I could get over to you. But I, unfortunately, we're closing. We're going to move on to something else ne for next week. Now, I want to talk about... Um, Again, I want to try to put all this together. Let's go ahead and talk uh, and look at 1 Thessalonians and chapter 5. This should be very familiar by now. In verse 23, it says, Now may the God of peace himself sanctify you completely, and may your whole spirit, soul, and body be preserved blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. So this makes it clear that we're a three-part being. Soul and spirit are not the same. If you recall, we covered this. But in Hebrews, it specifically says that the Word of God can divide the soul and spirit. So they cannot be the same thing. Then we went, went back to the very beginning of creation when God formed man out of the dust of the earth and then breathed into him the best breath of life and he became a living being. And we asked the question, which is real? Which is reality? The dust that was formed or the, the spirit who formed the dust which, which is really life about? Is it the dust or when that breath of life, the spirit was placed into that dust and he became a living being? Isn't that the thing that's the most important? Now, again, we've said a lot, but let me ask you this, okay, moving forward. Shouldn't we be majoring on the things of the spirit and in particular the spirit of God? Because that came first, that is reality. That even after you lay your body down, you will still exist because you are a spirit. And shouldn't we be majoring on, be, again, because not necessarily what we can see, feel, and touch, but the things that are eternal, our spirit, man. And we saw where 
we, we saw in the life of Elisha that the things of the Spirit, you might not be able to see them, but they, they exist at this moment right here, right now. But you have to have your eyes open in order to see them. And the way to do that is through the Word of God. How do we know that? Because Jesus said, my words are spirit and they are life. Therefore, when you begin to get into the word, you find the words tell you about the spirit, who you are in the spirit. And we found from James chapter one, I want to go ahead and turn there uh, just right quick. James chapter one, he says this, but therefore lay aside all filthiness and overflow of wickedness and receive with meekness the implanted word, which is able to save your souls. Your soul, when you are born again, your soul is not saved. Your spirit man has been recreated. You are in the life and the nature of God, and you will go to be with Jesus when you die, but your soul is still in the process of being saved. And the way to do that is through the Word of God. Now, the quicker you get into the Word of God, the quicker you begin to renew your mind, we'll look at that scripture right quick, the quicker your soul will be saved. And it's amazing how many things change when your soul begins to be saved, when you begin to think in line with the Word, when you begin to see in line with the Word of God. Then he goes into this, he says, um, to be doers of the, of the Word of God and not hearers only, but for if anyone is a hearer of the Word and not a doer, he is like a man observing his natural face in the mirror. He observes himself and goes away and immediately forgets what kind of man he was. Now, again, we have natural mirrors to tell us what's going on with this body in what we can't see. But then we have the Word of God, which is a mirror to show us who we really are in the Spirit. Not, not wish, who we wish we would be, or maybe we will one day, but the Word of God actually tells you are right, right here, right now, today. And it, then it goes on here and says this, but, if, but he who looks into the perfect law of liberty and continues in it, and is not a forgetful hearer, but a doer of the work, this one will be blessed in what he does. Okay, so if you want to see the reality of who you are in the mirror show up on the outside, you're going to have to look into the Word, continue in it, and do it. Okay? Now, uh, Romans says it a little bit different. Go with me to Romans. And we're going to be in chapter 12. We kind of like left off here. It says, I beseech you, therefore... Brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, wholly acceptable to God, which is a reasonable service. Now notice this, and do not be conformed to this world, but transformed by the renewing of your mind. I want to stop right there. What are you renewing your mind to? To the things of the Spirit, who God says you really are. Now, there's a lot of people out there right now today that you need to transform from sickness to heal. Now, on the inside of you, healing is already there. It's already been supplied. If you were to look in the mirror, the Word of God, it would say that to you, that by His stripes ye were healed. It would, it's already accomplished. But how do you get that transformation to take place so that it shows up in every cell of your body? It shows up in your teeth, your gums. It shows up in your back. If it's finances, the the Bible says that Jesus... Uh, who knew uh, Jesus was made poor that you through his poverty might be made rich. How do you get that, that for those finances to show up? You look into the mirror, you continue in it, and you, continue, you begin to renew your mind to think in line with the Word of God, and then it will tr there will be transformation will take place. How do you, okay, and those are just outward things. What about the inward things? That you are the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. How do you lay aside your actions that you have done in unrighteousness. How do you lay aside the lying, the stealing, the, all that stuff? It's real simple. It doesn't come just by saying, okay, I quit. <laughs> because I don't know about you, but there's been plenty of sin that I said I quit and I didn't quit. <laughs> okay, I continued in it. And I wanted to transform. I didn't want to be that person. I, you know, I think the best example of this for me is my temper that I used to have a terrible temper. And I got, had to get into the Word of God and I had to meditate the Word of God because it, it talked about being peaceable and things like this. Well, that wasn't me. At least I didn't think it was me. But then when I got, began to look into the Word of God and began to act on it, I actually transformed from being a hothead to not being a hothead. 
but I had to look into the perfect law of liberty. I had to renew my mind. I had to renew my mind to the, to the fact that the wrath of man does not produce the righteousness of God. So I can get as angry as I want to, but it's not going to achieve a right result. It's just not. Now, this is something you have to do. Jesus has already done his part. Now, this is your part. This is your response to believing that he's done it. This is your response to that. That you believe he has done these things, that he d you believe he has provided for you peace, you believe he has provided for you righteousness, you believe he has provided for you healing, he has provided for you prosperity, but you're going to have to renew your mind. You're going to have to get into the Word of God and spend time there until you can see it. We talked about that as well. And, and again, we're not trying to turn, we're not trying to become something. We're actually already that right now, but we must transform outwardly by the renewing of our mind. Now, a lot of people, they're like, well, I prayed about this and, and nothing happened. It doesn't come by praying. It comes by the renewing of your mind. Well, I gave an offering and this didn't happen. It doesn't come by giving offering. It comes by the renewing of your mind. And you, you, one of the cons, okay, one of the fundamental things about renewing of the mind is correction. And a lot of people, they don't like to be corrected. Your mind is not renewing if you are not making correction. Because the renewing of the mind specifically is pointing out, I believe this, but this is true. I, I thought this, but this is reality. I behave this way, but this is the right thing. That, that's part of renewing of the mind. Now remember what we read there in James, that you must receive with meekness the implanted word. With meekness the implanted word. Quit arguing with the word. Now, I'm going to get into something right now that is probably going to be a bit controversial, but I believe it fits with this. And especially since today is offering day on the broadcast, and I'm going to invite you to become a partner with the ministry, um, I, I think there's, you, you, there's some things really that I, will lead into that, okay? Go with me to John chapter 8. Now, again, I know some of you are not going to like some of this, but I want to help you. And I want you to be everything that God has called you to be. And there's only one way to get there. So um, let's go back up a little bit. We're in John chapter 8. He said, he, he, uh, Jesus says a lot of different things. He talks about his departure. He's, he says in verse 27, they did not understand, but he spoke them to the Father. And then Jesus said to them, when you lift up the Son of Man, then you will know that I am He, and that I do nothing of myself, but as the Father has taught me, I speak these things. Okay? Now notice this. He's talking about you got, when I'm lifted up, right? That I was sent from the Father, and that the Father taught me these things, and that's what I'm saying. And then he says this, And he who sent me is with me. The Father has not left me alone. I always do those things that please Him. Notice in verse 30, as soon as he spoke these words, many believed in him. So these people are believers. Man, I, there is so much I want to share with you. Um, please, please, this is our last time to offer this for free. There is so much I'm going to say in here. You need to get this. Contact us on the website. Give us your name and address and we'll send it to you. Or uh, you can call the phone number. But we want to bless you with this. Our partners make this possible. We want to put tools into your hands that you can renew your mind, that you can receive with meekness the implanted word. And let us do that, will you? Because again, as I'm reading this, it's like there's so much I'd like to say. Now notice here in verse, so there's these, he said these things. He's talked about being lifted up. He's talked about the Father sent him. He's talking about, there's just a lot here that they're believing. Same, same things you and I believe. We believe that he was, gonna, was lifted up. We believe that the Father sent him. And he, now it says, as he spoke these things, many believed in him. Now the very next verse, look at this. Then Jesus said to those Jews who believed him. Okay, so he's not talking to the unbelievers. He's talking to the believers. Is that you? And he says this to a believer. 
If you abide in my word, you are my disciples indeed, and you shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. Well, now it's interesting because he's just said a lot. Uh, actually, he said a lot of what we've been talking about. First thing is, just because you're a believer doesn't mean you're a disciple. It doesn't. If being a believer automatic, automatically made you a disciple, he wouldn't have said this. Why? Because they already believe. And he says, you've, you've become a believer. That's awesome. That's awesome. And I thank God for that. But I need for you now to make a decision to become a disciple. Now further, it gets even stronger because he said, believing in me is not enough to bring about freedom in your life. In order for freedom to take place in your life, I need you to become a disciple. And the way you become a disciple is if you abide in my word. And when you abide in my word and you become my disciple, you shall know the truth and the truth shall make you free. Many of you today are not free because you are believers but not disciples. Honestly, there's some areas of my life that I need freedom in. And the only reason I'm not free is because I believe, but I'm not disciplined. I'm not a disciple in that area. By the way, disciple means discipline one. And discipline's got a dirty, it's kind of a dirty word in some Christian circles, especially in grace circles. And I'm not slamming them. I am a grace preacher. I'm also a faith preacher. Actually, I'm a word preacher. But I, I, I do understand a disciple is going to be a disciplined one. Well, I just believe. That's great. But are you a disciplined one? Are you abiding in his word? Why does he say this? Why is it this abiding to live there in his word? Why is it this living in this word? What will this do? Well, as you live there, you will begin to know the truth. Now, again, you don't know the truth if all you do is stare at the outside. You know the truth by looking at the things of the Spirit and His words are Spirit and they are life, right? So Jesus is telling them, I'm, you need to take a step from just being a believer to being a disciple. Now to do that, abide in my word. How did James say it? That you abide in the word, that you are not a forgetful hearer, but a doer of the work and you will be blessed in what you do. How did Paul say it? Be transformed by the renewing of your mind. It's all the same thing. Now, again, if you don't know where to start, contact us. We'll help you. Honestly, one of the things you could do to renew your mind is get this, get your Bible out and go through everything we say. Go back to fighttowin.tv, get the last 10 broadcasts, get your Bible out. And, and every time I use a scripture, stop and read it through and begin to take notes. Become a disciple of the word. Begin to abide there. That this is where you live. Quit living in news reports. And quit living in political commentators. And quit living according to what the, you know, the university of the mind is telling you about your, your body and your soul. Begin to abide in the word. Become a disciple. When it's talking about James, that's really what he's calling them to. There are, there are things on the inside of you that are reality that your mind does not, your soul does not acknowledge because it has not been renewed to them. Your soul does not know these things to be true and, and therefore freedom is not showing up. But you could have freedom if you would renew your mind. You say, well, I'm a believer. Great, these people are believers too, but they're not disciples. They're not abiding in his word. Now, here's the mark of a person who isn't a disciple. Next verse. Then they answered and said, we are Abraham's descendants. We have never been in bondage to anyone. How can you say you will be made free? Okay, think about this. They have right there in their presence... The manifestation of their faith. And people say, what do you mean by that? They have been believing for the Christ for centuries. They have been believing for the anointed one to come. The very object of their faith is standing in front of them. They know he is. How do we know that? Because they believe in him. Right? These people are still arguing with him. 
Are they receiving with meekness the implanted word? Oh, we're not in bondage to anyone. Now, now notice the, the self-deception that's taking place. We are Abraham's descendants. We have never been in bondage to anyone. Now, before we get into a history lesson, I want you to think about that right then, while they're there in this meeting, if they were to look around even casually, you know what they're going to see? Roman soldiers. And, and, you know, back then, if there was a large gathering, it was protocol for Roman soldiers to show up and monitor it. So somewhere, if there's very many people there, there's some Roman soldiers. And with, with evidence that they are in bondage to someone standing in their midst, they declare, we've never been in bondage to anybody. Really? What about that centurion standing right there? And, and then you start into a history lesson. You've never been in bondage to anyone? Nobody? Um, you know, have you ever... Uh, you remember Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob? Who came after that? <laughs> Was it not a guy named uh, Joseph? <laughs> Was he not a, uh, a ruler in Egypt? And then were there not several hundred years by which the Israelites, the children of Abraham, were in bondage? I mean, isn't the whole story of Moses about how God took the descendants of Abraham and brought them out of bondage? What about Cyrus? What about Nebuchadnezzar? Any of this ring a bell? <laughs> and they sit there arguing with him that they believe in. No, that's not true. We've never been in bondage to anybody. Now, could it be that Jesus is saying some things that are true of you that you're arguing with? Healing, peace. He's called you to something and you're arguing with him saying, I can't do it after all. I've made these mistakes. Could it be possible right now, right where you are, that Jesus is true and you've made the mistake? Well, I'm just having trouble believing it. That's okay. Move from being a believer to a disciple. Begin to renew your mind. All the truths that I'm going to teach you on any broadcast that I teach are going to take you renewing your mind to. In fact, as we get into this, I, I, want you to, I want you to see something here. This ministry, Kurt Owen Ministries, is about making disciples, taking believers, and making them disciples. Now, do we get people saved? Yes, every week people get saved watching this broadcast, every week. Do people get healed watching this broadcast? Pretty much every week. But here's the thing. This ministry is about taking those of you and others who say, I believe in Jesus, and teaching and discipling them in the Word of God so that they can know the truth and they can be free. Or as James says it, our job at Curto and Ministries is to put, let you look and teach you how to look into the perfect law of liberty for, for you to continue in it, for you to learn how to do it in your everyday life, that you not become a forgetful hearer, but a doer of the work, and that the blessing of God show up in everything that you set your hand to. I'm not teaching you these things from the Word of God to get you blessed. I'm teaching you these things from the Word of God because you are blessed. You know, here, uh, if, I, if I, I can find it right quick, this is 1 Samuel 30. I want you to see this because this is important because I'm going to ask you to become a partner today with Kurt Owen Ministries. Either become a monthly partner, which would be awesome, or be give a, a one-time generous gift. Here, here we are. This is where, let me kind of synopsis for the sake of time. What's happened is, is somebody came while David was out fighting and took all of their families and all of their stuff. And so they, they're going to pursue them. They're going to go back and fight. And so they split the group. There's some people that are not going to go down to the battle. They're actually going to stay behind by the stuff, right, and protect the stuff. 
And so they go down, David whips them, him and his men. And when they come back, the guys who went down and fought says, uh, you guys who stayed by the stuff, you don't get any of the spoils. We get to keep them. And David steps up and he says, uh, in verse 24, he says, but he will, who will heed you in this matter? But as his part is who goes down to battle, so shall his part be who stays by the supplies. They shall share alike. See, that's the thing. When you become a partner with this ministry and we're out making disciples, we're making disciples every day on this podcast. We're making disciples by the free product that we send out. You become a partaker. I might be the one doing the fighting here on the broadcast. I might be the one doing the fighting by mailing these things out, but you are the one that's making it possible for me to do it. And so we share in the rewards. That's what I want for you. Would you join me in this? Would you join me in making disciples? And and listen, not just in making other disciples, would you join join with me and become a disciple yourself? Would you become a disciple? Listen, for every book we mail out, it's at least five dollars. I don't remember how much books are about 10 bucks. The, the, the mailing is $5. Even $5 provides even these things. I don't know how we're going to send these out, but if we were to mail this out, it's going to cost at least five bucks. You could do that. Those, there are those of you that give $100 a month. That is absolutely awesome because that is, can supply several different books and materials. That, did you know that those of you, if you give $1,000 a month, did you know that you're paying for a broadcast every single month and every person that is discipled through that broadcast you, you will get credit for. Isn't that awesome? So please become a partner today. To receive your free copy of this new teaching entitled Spirit, Soul, and Body, order online at fighttowin.tv or call us at 1-800-215-0428. Thank you so much for giving today. You can do that by texting the number at the bottom of your screen or you can go to our website at fighttowin.tv or even if you want to mail in a check, you can do that there. Thank you so much. And I believe, let me pray for you. Father, in the name of Jesus, you've heard everything we've taught over these last two weeks. Lord, it is our desire, my desire, their desire, to be not just believers, but disciples. Lord, but not just do that, but to make disciples, to fulfill the Great Commission. Not just get people saved, not just make them believers, but Lord, that they would become disciples. And Lord, My brothers and sisters, we're doing this together. And Lord, I thank you for every person that is discipled, every person that receives material, every person saved, every person healed. Lord, that they receive credit equally, even as we do, because they are the ones that make it possible. And Lord, I thank you everything that they've sown today, that you will multiply back to them 100 fold. In Jesus name, amen. Thank you for becoming a partner. I'll see you next week. This is Kurt Owen reminding you, Jesus is risen. Victory is assured. Hello, I'm Kurt Owen. The most important thing in your life is hearing from Jesus accurately. And it is a skill you can always improve on. I'd like you to join me February 2nd through the 4th in Port St. Lucie, Florida, where I'm gonna be teaching you practically and simply how to hear from God for yourself. I don't want you turning your hearing from God over to me. I want you to have this intimacy with Jesus that in your personal life, February 2nd through the 4th in Port St. Lucie, Florida. Join us today.